Hey guys, the problem that we are going to discuss today is GCD and we are going to discuss the Euclid's GCD algorithm to compute greatest common divisor. So let me give you a quick recap of what is a G GCD. So GCD stands for greatest common divisor and GCD of two numbers is nothing but the largest number that divides both the numbers. Okay. So for example, if I give you a number A that is let's say 12, a number B let's say it's 20, then GCD of A and B will be the largest number that divides both 12 and 20. Okay. So this is nothing but 4. Okay. So you cannot have a number which is greater than 4 and it divides both 12 and 20. And HCF is also same as GCD. So HCF is same as GCD and we can also find out LCM we will see little later on. Okay. So let's focus upon how to compute GCD and there are multiple ways. There is a brute force approach that I'm not going to discuss. So you can just keep on iterating from one to minimum of A and B and find out a number which divides both A and B. Okay. So this is going to be an inefficient approach. So we are not going to discuss this one. So we are going to discuss something more efficient. Okay. So this algorithm, although it's a, it's a very intuitive algorithm, it's called Euclid's algorithm. And let me first tell you what it is. And then we will go behind the intuition of the algorithm why this is correct. Okay. So Euclid's algorithm for GCD, even if you don't know the name, it's very likely you can derive this algorithm on your own. Okay. Because it's very similar how do you compute GCD on your notebook? Okay, so let me show you. So let's say uh, it says GCD of two numbers A and B. This is exactly same as GCD of B and A modulus B. And there is another case. Okay, so this is going to this is a recursive definition. Okay, so we are expressing GCD in terms of GCD but uh, we, we can so implement this either using recursion or we can implement this using a iterative method also okay so we are basically trying to convert a bigger problem into smaller problem okay because when you do a mod b you are reducing the size of the problem okay and there is another case here when the uh, b becomes zero so gcd of a comma zero is nothing but a okay so these are the two uh, rules that will help you to find gcd of any two numbers a and b and now let us see why these are correct okay so i'm going to give you an intuition behind these two rules okay so let us see how do you compute gcd on your notebook so you write it like this so you have 12 you have 20 and you do the division so you say okay 12 ones are 12 and i am left with 8 so here you say okay uh, this number 12 will come to this place so this is 12 and then you again keep on dividing unless you get a zero so you do uh, 8 ones are 8 and you are left with 4 and here you copy 8 here okay so this 8 comes to this place so this is the 8 and you say okay 4 twos are 8 and I am left with 0 and now maybe you copy 4 here okay and but but you stop at this point okay you stop at this particular point and you clearly say okay uh, when i get this remainder as zero i know this number or this number is my gcd this number is finally my gcd because this term is becoming zero so let us try to uh, see from the formula if we are uh, if we can get the correct gcd using these two rules so okay let let me call this number as b okay okay so let me call this number as b and let me call this number as a so when you're going from this state to this state you can see the problem still remains same so here you are finding the gcd and here also you're finding gcd and these two numbers are a and b and what about these two numbers so let's say these two numbers are a dash and this number is b dash so let me call this as gcd of a comma b is same as gcd of a dash and b dash 
and how do you express a dash in terms of a and b so this is nothing but gcd of if you say what is a dash so a dash is nothing but this is the old value of b so this is the old value of b and what about this term this term is nothing but this is the value of a modulus b okay so if you talk about what is b dash now so b dash is nothing but a modulus b so you can say this is nothing but a modulus b so this is how you're uh, actually decreasing the size of the problem you're reducing the values of a and b unless one of the value is becoming zero so this is same as gcd of uh, a double dash and b double dash so this is nothing but again gcd of b and a mod b and this is same as nothing but gcd of b and a modulus b and at this particular point this is the value of a and this is the value of b so you can say when b becomes equal to zero your gcd is nothing but the value of a okay so this is nothing but the value of a so at this point we are going to stop so this is the second rule so this is the stopping criteria the value of b is zero and whatever is the new value of a you have got that is actually your gcd so we are saying uh the value of a that is left when b become, becomes zero is our gcd okay so this is how you actually uh, can intuitively derive this algorithm without worrying about uh, without actually remembering what the terms are you can derive this yourself okay so this is euclid's algorithms to compute gcd and maybe if you want to see uh, how we can do it using recursion so we will have a call stack which will store the values of a and b so let's say the values of a and b in the beginning are 12 and 20 okay so you make a recursive call which reduces this problem and the new values of a and b will be now 8 and 12 okay so this will be 8 and this will be 12 okay and the new values will be now four and eight okay because this goes like this because you're making these updates like this okay and the new values will be now zero and four okay because this goes like this okay so you can see when this term a becomes equal to zero your sorry when this term b becomes equal to zero your gcd is nothing but a so you return the value of a here you give 4, you return A here 4, you return A here 4 and from, finally from this method you also return A. So this is your recursive case now and this is your base case. Okay. So let us try to submit this on hacker blocks just to make sure we are doing the right thing. Okay. So this is problem GCD from the hacker blocks practice section and i have to input two numbers n1 and n2 and i have to output a single integer which gives me the gcd of two numbers okay so let's say gcd will be nothing but i can say if b is zero my answer is a or i can use ternary operator okay so i can say return if b is zero the answer is going to be a otherwise it is going to be gcd of b comma a modulus b so just one line of code and we are done okay so this handles both your recursive case and the base case in recursion. So let me try to submit this now. Okay, just one line of code. Okay. So in the meanwhile, if you are interesting in finding out the LCM also, okay. So we have got a correct answer here. Okay, so this is correct. And if you want to find out the LCM also, so LCM stands for least common multiple. Okay, LCM. So this is the uh, common multiple of both the numbers and that is having the lowest value. Least common multiple. So this is nothing but so there is a relation between GCD LCM and the numbers. So the relation is like this GCD into LCM is equal to product of the numbers A into B. So GCD in our case is four LCM. We want to compute A into B is nothing but 12 into 20. 
so lcm will be nothing but 12 into 20 divided by 4 so this goes like this so the lcm of two numbers is 20 so that number that is a common multiple and having a lowest value so this is how you can compute lcm so gcd comes from the euclid's algorithm and lcm comes from this formula okay so that's all for this video guys hope you learned how to compute gcd